Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're playing some Midrange Shadow. Midrange Shadow has been reasonably weak in the current meta and hasn't been performing as well as other decks, at least in my own personal opinion. You will see it in tournaments still being reasonably popular, but on a ladder it isn't doing quite as well. Mainly because it just seems to lack a consistent way to end the game on an early note. Whereas other decks can just kind of outswarm you at this stage in rotation and it really becomes difficult to deal with that consistently. Of course if you do get pretty good curves, you can win, it's not going to be an instant loss, but overall I don't think it performs as well as it could. I am only running double Demon Lord Ector build though, so that does limit it a little bit, but most of the time I have a Demon Lord in my hand and that's still not enough to win the game. So. We will check out a couple games that I did manage to win, but overall this deck just doesn't perform quite as well as it has in the past, which is why we're looking at it now, because it has been about three months since the launch of Chrono Genesis, and this deck just doesn't see the play that it used to, so I thought why not we'll go back and we'll take a look at it. So our first matchup here is a Portal matchup. Portal usually is favoured against Mid Shadow, it just really depends on really luck and draws. If you can outdraw Portal, you can usually do well, otherwise usually Portal can have a pretty good edge on you. So we do have a Demon Lord Goblin at Zombie Party, I just did decide to keep that because I do find that the Demon Lord comes in handy on 7 to really limit what Portal can do, especially if you can take advantage of a Zombie Party and not have to throw it out early, although throwing out early isn't the be all and end all of this deck. So our opponent goes for the Mechawin Swordsman, most likely aiming for uh, some kind of variation in Portal. Mid Portal is reasonably popular, but I am more partial to seeing more, uh, I, I want to call it all archetype Portal, where you can pretty much go any direction with the deck depending on your matchup. But we just see the Cat Cannoneer, which does tend to be more aggressive, but is being played in majority of Portal decks in the current meta because we really want that rush damage early on. So I do decide to throw the zombie party to get that kind of value while being able to set up a 1 damage to face. Works out pretty nicely overall. We do see the Magsteel Lion being a little bit of a problem, but we do also have a Demeter and the Bellinus, which are pretty reasonable cards on the whole. And I decide to take the on this anyway. Which turned out to work out nicely. Either way I was going to Demon Nita evolve into it anyway. Really not a concern overall what they were going to do. I can just kind of beat them down. Which is what you want. You want this early game supremacy. If you can take the early game against Paul, usually you can win. Of course if they do go full ward it is going to be a hundred times harder, but in this case they seem to be going for a more rush style, which does seem to be more common among portal players. Usually you don't see the ward ones unless you are up normally against a reasonably good portal player who's throwing down wards in retaliation to you and not so much just randomly going for rush to try and out aggro you in these sort of games. And of course, we get back to max and it's really hard for Portal to deal with Ceres in a normal situation. So in this one, a Desex Machina is probably the best way to go. But it still is only going to buy them some time. Buying time isn't isn't going to be enough really. I mean, we've got some pretty solid cards here and can push pretty hard with damage. I mean, next turn is a guaranteed Demon Eater, sorry, Demon Lord, straight into the board, which should be really nice. Even just on one follower would be more than enough to really pressure this game. And if they kill two, Demon Lord gets its own zombies, which are going to be really nice for trading and rebuilding the board. So it works out quite well in our favor. And we can pretty much immediately follow that up with the more Fane or just in general to play the board, we don't really have any kind of big worries. And holding onto the Evolve will really help us pressure this Portal player into basically having to force clear everything. We see the Puppet. Uh, not much else really here. A couple of Puppets, not going to be enough to win this, so Portal player does end up conceding. Next up... 
we have Rune. Rune is a more difficult matchup for Shadow most of the time. I mean, Shadow can quite easily overpower Rune if it gets the right cards, but getting those cards are a little bit less consistent than what Rune has, so usually you're relying on RNG to really pull the cards you need to deal with the Rune threat. Being able to throw a goblin as a 1-2 on turn 1 is pretty much her optimal play. Being aggressive against Rune is usually your best advantage. And of course Ceres works really nicely as well, being able to put some pressure down as soon as possible. And our opponent is playing Neutral Rune. I've been playing a bit of Neutral Rune lately, I'm pretty sure the last video you would have seen would have been Neutral Rune. It's a pretty fun deck overall, so definitely go check that one out. Our opponent doesn't really do anything though, we pretty much get free reign on this board, which is great. Star Reader Stella isn't going to do much, I still think I should have called her Star Seer, I think that would have been much more interesting, but not going to do much against this board on a whole, especially when we can just trade a goblin and go for two more face damage while setting up the Ceres for next turn. And if Ceres is lost, we do have some pretty good options going forward. For the forced Andromeda, I suppose that's not too bad. It does cost them out of all. And we can just throw the Bellinus to face and sacrifice it with the Demon Eater. To ping off this 4-1 and gets a couple more chances at decent cards. Which worked out, we did get the Goblin, which is pretty solid, and the Ceres for next turn works out really well. To win. Then Leonardian Mage comes down to kind of ruin my day just a little bit, but them only putting two damage does tell me that they're lacking no neutrals fight. in this hand. No so to follow up against this play, I don't really have anything major. All I can really do is throw the Ceres to the board. I do decide to evolve and trade it, only because I know Ceres will survive, and with that survival they can't trade Leonardian Mage straight into it. Which means any kind of trade here will instantly lose that Leonardian Mage. The daughter. Professor of Taboos does come in hard. But trading to the Ceres this with the Professor of Taboos does make them extremely vulnerable to Black Swan. Black Swan dealing 2 damage to my entire enemy's board and face, while at the same time, being able to set up a nice body should be enough. To really pressure this one player. There probably isn't much of a way out of this at this point. Especially when we have Underworld Ruler Aisha as our turn 10 play, and very close to 10 Necromancy, which should be fairly easy considering Dean Eater and Catacomb. So we do go for a bunch of draw power, not uncommon for neutral rune decks. But no way to remove this 6 1 is going to be absolutely crushing for them. Especially since they did only play a bunch of small drops, it does mean that gets instantly cleared out by the swan. It was really sad that that's how that went for them. But we can pretty much do whatever we wanted and not really have any consequence there, so really fortunate. So while those games went well, a few other games I had played went absolutely shockingly, or were pretty close. Overall, I don't recommend Mid Shadow for laddering, I would much rather play something like a Ramp Dragon at this stage, or even Portal, just because if you're looking for fun, Portal's great, if you're looking for consistency, Dragon's great, they're really great at the moment, that's all I got to say for it. I mean, make Portal great, make Dragon great, well, don't really make Dragon great, Dragon's a pain in the ass, but to be fair, have some fun with this deck if you want to try it out. It might become half decent next expansion. We are seeing a few cards rotate, but hopefully that won't be a big issue. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content, and I will catch you guys next time. Be sure to check this deck in the description below.